This is Thirsty for Knowledge Thursdays. In this week's webinar presentation or topic is the pre-retirement <laughs> checklist. The checklist in terms of what we're going to be covering and going over this evening. To start with that, the number one question that they always ask is, when do you want to retire? While this is a concern and it's an important question, it's not the number one question that needs to be asked. The number one question that needs to be asked of everybody is, how are you going to retire? Because until you know how, you can't really know when. That's where we get into the reality check about your numbers. And we say that with your numbers, we really mean your budget and your cash flow. Because in your pre-retirement years, you really, until you know what you spend, you can't begin to save or save reasonably with some efficiency. Some people I've met do have a pretty good handle on their budget and cash flow. They're usually, there's a pretty big float in there. They're kind of guesstimated. Um, and the reason for that is because they can forgive themselves because the next check is always coming in. The shift comes though when you start looking at going into retirement and now you're living on more of a fixed income. Too often, as Craig said, those it's guesstimates, right? And, and while it's okay in your accumulation phase, it's not when you're in the distribution part. We had to what's in your buckets. The idea here is money, your money in retirement only has three functions. And the first thing that is, is its income. Think of that as fuel, right? This is what makes the engine, this is what makes the car go. The second thing that your money does is it provides liquidity. Think of it, the car breaks down or gets a flat tire. Something needs to be repaired. Well, you better have the cash on hand to be able to pay for it or the road trip stops there. The last thing that your money does when you're in retirement, possibly if it's a concern for you, is that it's there to leave a legacy. Retirees, they try to make the same dollar solve all three things. I can't spend a dollar today and expect it to be there tomorrow. But you really have to have three buckets set up for this. And that first bucket, the one that's making the car go, the income bucket, that has to be filled first. Fourth thing there too, that we, it's really not a bucket, but more an overview, is you know, the protection aspect of this whole plan. So with distribution planning, this is just sort of, I'm walking into retirement. Craig's gonna play the game, but fast forward Craig, and he's decided he's 67 years old. This is when he wanted to retire. He's gonna live for 20 years in retirement. That's average mortality for a male right now, age 87. Portfolio is gonna return 11.74% on an annual basis. So Craig, how much is in your, your all of your assets? How, what do you have in all of your assets when you retire? Money, money that you can spend. A million bucks. All right, and so how much do you need to live on with that million dollars on an annual basis? So let's say I need 75,000 a year. Okay, and you're getting 25 in Social Security. So the 11.74, the you might be saying, Tom, Craig, where, where are you getting this 11.74? So 11.74, all I did was I took the last 20 years of the S&P 500, and this is when you look at a year by year and do it out, what it comes out to, that average is 11.74%. The danger of the calculators and the tool, you know, I mean, the, the whole retirement plan industry is built on the concept that you're gonna get that out over time and your money is just gonna grow because you're not touching it until your retirement, until later in life. I mean, with a retirement plan, you're adding to it as it's going along, so it's even getting bigger. And when you do that, it looks something like this, where the amount just continues to grow over time. And the idea here is that works great when we're in accumulation. Where the problem happens is that all of the calculators and tools do the same thing once we get into retirement. Because if you're taking less than what that average rate of return that's projected out, you're never gonna, your, your plan won't fail. The numbers when you do it out 
it's the problem is it's going to fail. It allows me to plug it in. And even what Craig gave you a 5% rate of return is in about year 13 or year 14, because what you run into is sequence of risk so that the he'd run out of money. He just would be because of losses in the market and his depleting the asset at the same time, he's going to run out of money. And just so you know, people understand what the sequence of risk of return is. Right. If, if you started at age 67, where you had me starting, in your first two years, they're phenomenal. But the next three years are, are horrible. But at the same time, you have these horrible years, I'm actually pulling money out. So they never get a chance to recoup. So what I can't control once I retire is when I'm going to have negative and positive years. And the more negative years you have in the front end of your retirement, the more heavily it impacts the back end of your retirement. What do you consider a safe withdrawal rate? Well, I'd tell you, you know, I know what my answer would be, but the answer I get from most of my clients uh, would either be five to six percent or they'd recite to me the four and a half percent rule. And so that's that's really where the conversation sort of turns here with where before in pre-retiree or accumulation phase, it was all about the average rate of return for the market. And that's why all those calculators usually use 8% as an average, because that's what, when we're looking at 10, 20 year time horizons, safely, that's what the market return has been. And so the calculators, they all use that. It's when you turn it around and now say, as Craig was just describing, I'm pulling money out. And now I have to be aware of what can I pull out. And Craig mentioned the 4% rule. That used to be the standard. The 4% rule, which just said, if you withdrew 4% of your money every year, regardless of what those swings and turns and turmoils were doing in the market, that you could reasonably expected to not run out of money by the time you passed away in retirement. Now down, it's closer probably to 3%. I think Craig and I, we, we safely use about three and a half. The speed bumps along the way. First one is social security, specifically claiming social security. So you take social security prior to your full retirement age, they actually, there's a penalty, it's a give back. And that give back is about 6.2% every year that you fall before your full retirement year. The second one here really isn't too much of a trip up, but it's one of those just, you know, it's Medicare. The real conversation, because this gets into that when, where Medicare becomes eligible at age 65. So if you retire at 63, you've got two years where you've got to get coverage before Medicare becomes available. This is the biggie, taxes. Here's what happens with taxes, especially with money that's in a qualified account, right? That By that, I mean a 401k, IRA, etc. Because that money that when it's taken out for income purposes is taxed. If you have more income than a certain level, your social security benefits then become taxable. So to have different assets of different tax groupings or categories gives you a lot more flexibility. Skilled or assisted care. It's the pothole that nobody talks about. This is why Craig was talking about those, those, some of those protection plans and, and really needing to be thinking about how I'm protecting myself along with dealing with all this other stuff because that's the most important. If you don't patch that pothole, it can just slide you right off the road and derail your whole journey very, very quickly. Have questions? Ask us. We can help with that. You can email Craig at crichardson at ariesfoundation.org or you can visit the website to learn more about what we do and how we might be able to help you. www.ariesfoundation.org Want to see more of this recording? Go to www.ariesfoundation.org forward slash events. If you know an organization or community support group that could benefit from one of our workshops, reach out to Tom T. Alessi at ariesfoundation.org. Our mission is trying to help everyone have a better relationship with their money.